hello students so how are you all so i welcome you all so my name is aditya jain from ask itians and today we are going to start a new chapter of your grade 6 which is motion measurement and distances okay so if i talk about the part measurement first of all we are concerned with the part measurement then we'll see the part motion okay so if i talk about previous ages or the Uh, long time ago, we used some modes of transport. Yes, you know, because if I talk about long time ago, we used to travel with our feet only. Yeah, we used to walk. Then we develop a technology known as boats. Yeah, we develop boats to travel in the water. Yeah, after that we were using some animals, or simply we were carrying some weights on our back and moving on the road. So that was the transport of or means of transport we were using. But as the time flies, technology came. But as the time flies, technology came. Just like we have developed a technology called wheel. So after that, we were uh, carrying or using the technology of wheel to carry the loads or to carry the people from one place to another place. If I gave you example about bullock cart, we started our journey with bullock cart. Then we, after the 19th century, we have uh, developed technology like motor vehicles. Yeah. Now today we have developed aeroplanes, spacecrafts. So now the modes of transport has been changed from time to time. Yeah. So that's the development in the modes of transport. Okay, so today we are going to study these first modes of transport. Then, okay, so this is the chapter motion and measurement of distances. Okay, so see, first of all we are concerned with measurement of distances. First of all we will cover the topic measurement of distances. So first see what we are going to study. We are going to cover its topic in this class known as measurement methods, which are known as measurement methods. Yeah. Then we'll see standard units of measurement. Then we'll see how to measure lengths correctly, and then how to measure a length along a curved line. So basically, this lecture is all about measurement portion. Okay. So now let's start the lecture. That's I what that's what I told you because if I go with the timeline of transport, we are basically concerned with modes of transport we have been using from time to time. So first we started with boats. I told you. Then after the time flies, we uh, simplify as tell you. in the previous time we were using simple log of wood which is having a hollow cavity and then we used to travel on them on the sea yeah after that we developed the technology of joining different different pieces of wood and giving them different different shapes like boats so that's where the development of boat had started after that we developed the technology of wheel so after that wheel we were using that wheel in a bullock cart or in car any type of transport yeah now after that horses welcome horses we were using horses for traveling after that there were hot air balloons we all know hot air balloons they are the air transport air means of transport basically first the first advantage or first revolution in the transport was the development of steam engine steam engine or you can see the steam engine uses the technology of wheel again yeah then we then there comes the motorized ships ships having motor boats having motor then we will using the cycles also bicycles also this is steam engine and the right now the latest development is automobiles motor car okay so that is the timeline of transport that from time to time we were gaining some technology of transport starting from our feet just walking and now now if i talk about today's time we are using space crafts rockets yeah so we are even having reaching the space also yeah so now the technology has developed so much as far as this century is concerned okay now see basically there are three means of transport we use first is on land which we use to travel on land from one place to another place another new modes of transport is sea or you can say water you can say water mode of transport and the third one is on air yeah in air we used to travel so these are the basic examples of land uh, transport we use bus we use cars we use trolleys we use engines or trains so the, they all are examples of modes of transport on land now talking about sea we use boats some more technological boats yeah these are the ships and these are the simple design boats so basically boats and ship are the means of transport on sea now today if i talk about latest technology there are submarines yeah there are submarines also which move inside the surface of water yeah or inside the water submarine so they are also categorized under water modes of transport now concerned about air we have helicopters 
We have aeroplanes, we have hot air balloons, and the latest one is the rockets or satellites to be used to travel in air. Okay. So now the aeroplane has become the most popular means of transport with it because it requires less time to travel from one place to another place. Okay. So this was the timeline of modes of transport which you were using. Because if I give you some examples, suppose during your summer holidays. So during your summer holidays, some of you might travel to your relatives. So some might travel by bus. Some will take a train. Some will take a ship, or some will take a aeroplane. So all of you are using different different modes of transport for traveling from one place to another place. Yes or no? So you are using different different modes of transport for traveling from one place to another place. Okay. Now talking about measurement. What is the need of measurement basically? Because we are concerned with measurement in this lecture. So first of all, measurement. Okay. Suppose. Uh, if I you want to go from your home to your school or some marketplace, so how will you decide which mode of transport should you take? Either you can walk, yeah. Either you can walk, or either you can take a bus, either you can take a train, or if you are moving from one city to another city, you can take a aeroplane also or a flight also, yeah. So who is deciding that which mode of transport we have to use? There is something known as length. There is something known as length, or you can say the distance. Suppose if you have to go, uh, suppose a much smaller distance. If I say, so you can prefer walking or just taking a bus, local bus. But yeah, if you have to cover a larger distance, you have to use that train or aeroplane. So that distance, or I can say the length which you have to travel, will decide the mode of transport which you are going to take. Okay, that's why this term, which is known as measurement, is necessary in our daily life. That we have to measure that length. Yeah, getting my point. You have to decide that length. That how is the measurement of that length, mm -hmm. and on the basis of that length or measurement, you will decide which mode of transport you are going to use for your journey. Okay. So suppose in the school time we have done one activity. Suppose this is a table. This is a table in the school, and you want to measure the length of this table. You want to measure the length of this. Table. Okay, so suppose there are fifty students in class, and I, if I say you have to measure the length of the table with the hand span, everyone must use their hand span to calculate the length of the table. Okay, or you can use another method that you can use a, I say volleyball or your cricket bat. Suppose I am using a cricket ball, uh, cricket bat and a bales. So what I'll do, I'll align cricket bat like this, and I'll align bales like this, and I will measure how many. Cricket bats and bales are required to get this complete measurement of the length of the desk. Suppose I am getting the length of the desk as two complete bat lengths and two bales. So this is the length I have measured. Yeah. Suppose there was another person or another student in the class which has different bat, which has different bat. So he is answering me that he is answering me that that the length of the desk is three bats complete length and one bales. So see, there is some difference in measurement. Yeah, there is some difference in measurement. Yeah, because everybody has different different kinds of measurement. Because I have some other bed, and the, the other person should have another bed. So the length can vary. Yeah, so the length can vary. So the measurement can vary according to the size of bed or bales which you are using. So it depends upon the measurement method you you are using. Suppose I am uh, saying just calculate with the hand span, but it is uh, uh, also convenient or prevalent that the Hand span of different different student will be different. Yes or no? The hand span of different different students will be different because it is by birth. Everyone has just some different uh, measurement of this hand. Yeah. So you, someone will answer, I am getting three hand span. I am getting two hand span. So the answer will be confusing. Answer will be confusing. So basically, how you measure? If I go about measurement, there is two things involved in measurement. One is this three. So three is the number which is showing the magnitude, and hand span is something known as unit. Hand span is something known as unit which you are using to measure the length or width of anything. Yeah. In this case also, this two is the number, and bat is the unit which you are using. Okay. Someone will say, width of the table with my elbow, this length from my tip of the finger to my elbow. So we'll answer me like, sir, we are getting two elbow length, two elbow length of the table. So what is this two elbow length? Two is the number or magnitude, and this elbow length is the unit. So in the measurement, two things are required: this number or magnitude, and the second thing, which is unit. Okay. So this is why the need of measurement is there to decide how much larger or smaller is the length of any 
object or you can say any journey from one place to another place getting my point okay so now how do people know how far they have traveled this is the question that how do people know how far they have traveled so the answer of this question is the measurement you have to measure that distance you have traveled then only you will be able to answer how far or how small you have traveled from one place to another place okay so this is the thing that measurement is very important in day to day life because you have to know at how far or how small you have traveled from one place to another place so to get that idea you need something called as measurement okay so what does the basic meaning of measurement says measurement means the comparison of an unknown quantity with some known quantity if i go back with the previous example the known quantity to us was the hand span and we were comparing the unknown quantity which was the length of the table with that known quantity of hand span so i was saying i am getting the length of table as three hand span suppose 1 2 and 3 so the known quantity here or the standard quantity is the hand span and the unknown quantity was there in the table length so you are just comparing the unknown quantity table length with the known quantity hand span that is known as measurement so whenever you are measuring some quantity or some length or some distance what you are doing you are basically comparing the unknown quantity which you want to know with some known quantity which you already know that known quantity can be anything that known quantity can be anything it can be bat bat length it can be elbow length yeah it can be hand span also it can be elbow length also it depends upon your measurement okay so the known fixed quantity this known fixed quantity which i was taking as hand span is known as the unit is known as the unit and the result of a measurement is expressed in two parts so one part is a number and the other part is the unit of the measurement that's i told you suppose two elbow length so in two elbow length measurement two is the number and the other part is the elbow length which is the unit so this is the unit and this is the number so measurement is combination of two things number and unit that number will give you the magnitude and unit will give you the fixed quantity which you have taken to make the measurement okay clear so this is how measurement works or how measurement is necessary suppose in this picture if you see a person is measuring the length of his hand span yeah with some um, scale you say so the suppose the measurement comes at 9 cm so this 9 is the fixed number this is the one part or unknown quantity which i was saying in this centimeter is the known quantity which is the fixed quantity which is the known as unit which is known as units okay so this thing is clear that measurement has two things number as well as fixed quantity which is known as unit okay so what is the need for measurement now what is the need for measurement that you have to get a idea how far they have traveled but now i am talking about a word which is known as standard measurement or standard unit of measurement okay standard unit of measurement so there are some standard unit of measurement or standard devices if i gave you an example there is a meter scale or a ruler uh if i talk about a cloth merchant he will use a meter rod cloth merchant will use a meter rod and suppose i talk about tailor tailor uses a device known as tape to measure the length so what is the need for standard unit of measurement basically if i do it with activity suppose the same activity we are doing and uh, if i suppose replace it with measuring the height suppose we have to measure the height of a person or you have to measure your heights okay so there is one boy suppose a there is a boy a and there are rest rest of the people in class have to measure its height so there are two methods to measure height one we will do with the hand span so every individual will measure the height with a hand span length another we will use a suppose uh, meter scale or a tape we can use okay so suppose there are various data is involved by various person suppose b c d e f these are five students in the class who measure the height of the boy a so how to measure the height just stand beside the wall and make a mark on the top of the head here so and you have to measure the distance from the ground to the mark that will give you the height of that person a so suppose person b reported that he is getting the height of person a as two hand span okay c is getting three hand span okay d is getting 2.5 hand span so what is 2.5 hand span two complete hands and one half hand suppose e is reporting as 3.4 3.5 hand span 
okay f is reporting as 1 uh, 1.5 hands -on. okay so we are just taking for example so you can see all are reporting different different plans all are reporting although the object is same although the person is a whose height has to be measured but they are reporting different different heights why they are reporting different different heights because each individual has a different size of hand span each individual has a different size of hand span so this must be confusing if you want to measure any length or if you want to report any data that will be confusing because for every individual hand span means different thing the length of hand span of one person will not match with the length of hand span of other person so we have to make a measurement which is known as standard unit so which is universally accepted so there this is why the need comes of standard unit of measurement that's why we are using some standard units which are universally accepted so that everyone will get the same answer so now if they try to measure the length with a meter scale or any tape suppose b is getting 140 cm so now all will report the same value of 140 cm why because they are now using a standard value which is known as centimeter so everyone will get a answer at the same value so this is the need or this is the advantage of using standard units of measurement because in this left side column hand span every individual had different different length of hand span so what is measurement measurement is comparison of one unknown quantity with the known quantity now we have make the known quantity as a standard unit previously we were using the elbow length hand span bat weights anything you can use depending upon you but it varies from individual to individual to get a standard value or to get a standard result which is universally accepted you have to use some standard units so in this case we have used centimeter so this is the need of standard units of measurement clear now i think it is clear that how to or why to use the standard units of measurement so that everyone will get a same answer suppose you are measuring a height of that person on earth so on earth it will come as 140 cm and on moon it will also be 140 cm so everywhere the length is same or height is same because it is measured in standard units so that's why standard units are very much important now see some let's uh, standard units of measurement we use this is known as centimeter centimeter is one unit of length this is also a foot also you can also call it as feet foot is also another unit of measurement inch is another unit of measuring length meter is another unit and yard is another unit so these are different different units of measurement but yeah they are standard they are universally accepted 1 cm equals to 1 cm on earth is equals to 1 cm on moon or 1 cm in india is equals to 1 cm in america also so that is the advantage of using standard units of measurement clear now see the inter conversion basically there are basically three common units we use for measuring the length one is the meter other one is centimeter so first is meter which is every symbol m second one is centimeter which has a symbol small c small m third one is millimeter which has a symbol small m small n and the last one is kilometer these are the most common units the small k small m so these are the different standard units of measurement we have a scale here on the right side if you can see this has various divisions so this is a standard scale this is a standard scale which is known as metric rule okay so these has some partitions you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these are showing some centimeter values 1 cm 2 cm 3 cm starting from zero here so when you travel from this point zero towards this point you will get different different centimeter lengths and in between the centimeters there are small marks you can see there are small marks between centimeters suppose between 10 and 11 there are different different marks so these marks each individual part is showing the value of millimeter so this we have to inter convert is known as inter conversion of units suppose 1 meter is equals to 100 cm so what does that mean if 100 units of centimeter will combine they will make a meter so meter is a bigger unit in comparison to centimeter so if you have if you have to measure some bigger distance suppose the distance of a room or length of a room you will prefer using meter but yeah if you want to measure the length of a pencil then you will uh, prefer centimeter because centimeter is a smaller unit you can simply use a meter scale now 1 cm is equals to 10 mm so now 10 units or 10 parts of millimeter will combine to make a 
centimeter. That's why you can see on the scale between two and three, they are different different pointers, small small. They are showing millimeters. So between two and three, they are uh, ten millimeters. Yeah, that is the point. Now the highest unit we use for distance is kilometers. So one kilometer is a very bigger unit. It is equals to thousand meter. So this is required when you are traveling from one city to another city. When you are traveling from one city to another city, the distances are or the lengths are measured in kilometers. So these are some standard units of measure which are universally accepted. So I think it is clear why the need of measurement was there first of all. Then why the need of standard measurement was there? Then how to inter interconvert the different units of measuring lengths? It is clear. Okay. So we'll move forward now. Now we are concerned with measuring length correctly. First of all, we have seen how to measure length. Now we'll see how to measure length correctly. Basically, yeah, you can use any device. You can use tape. You can use uh, meter rod. You can use meter scale. Yeah, but first of all, we have to see how to measure the length correctly. Now the see the see this figure. Suppose you have to read a scale reading like this. This is the scale reading we have to measure. This red dot. So there are three ways of looking at this. Either you can look from this side, either you can look from this side, and either you can look from vertically above the point you have to measure. So the correct eye position is that position in which you are directly looking straight into the point on the scale on which you have to measure the length. This is the correct way because if if suppose the standard length is seven point five centimeter, so that standard length you will get by observing it from the vertically above point or vertically straight point. If you look. Through it, some other direction, say leftward or rightward, you will get some error. You will get some error. Suppose from there you will get seven point six centimeter, or you are getting seven point centimeter, seven point seven centimeter. So there is some error involved. So always measure the length, or whenever you want to read the reading on a scale, always read that reading in just looking directly vertically at that point at which the reading is required. So this is the one way to measure correct length. Other way is that suppose you want to measure the Length of this box using a meter scale. So always remember that you have to keep the meter scale aligned parallelly with the box, or just touching the box vertically. It should be not like that inclined. It should be perfectly touching the box in a straight line, so that you will get the correct measurement. Okay. So first thing is that you have to make the ruler aligned. Second thing, you have to observe this reading. So observe it vertically from here, just straight to this line. you have to measure it from here then you will get the correct reading the third point is that sometimes there are the end points of the ruler are break suppose the end points of the ruler are break so you can do what you cannot take the value from zero don't prefer to take the value from 0 cm because that part is broken rather prefer suppose that in this picture you can see the measurement has been taken from 1 cm the initial point is 1 and the final pointing something like 13.5 So the initial reading, initial reading was one centimeter, and the final reading, final reading was thirteen point five centimeter. So what is the effective length? For effective length, you have to subtract both these values. That is thirteen point five minus one. That will give you twelve point five centimeter. so this is the exact length of this box you want to measure but yeah if your scale is not broken you can directly start from 0 cm by putting 0 cm at one end point of the box and then reading this this value so if i ask about this or if i say about this example 12.5 cm and if you put the zero of the scale exactly at this end point so at another point you will get 12.5 cm correctly so this was the case when the ruler was not broken if the ruler is not broken at the end there is no problem you can start the measurement from in between any centimeter but yeah remember just take the difference of the two values you have taken at the starting point and the final point so this is the way to measure correct length so there are three ways or three things you have to consider or remember or take precaution of first is that always align the meter scale or whichever scale you are using with the object you are measuring the length of exactly align touching it straight second thing if the ruler is broken try to measure length from any other point uh, rather than zero and mark the difference just i have taken 13.5 minus 1 cm third point always try to look at the length or the point you which you want to measure vertically straight vertically straight suppose the mark is here so i'll measure it like this 
I not go like this. This is the incorrect method. This is the incorrect method. The correct method is this: vertically straight towards your eyes. So this is the correct way of measuring. Correct way of measuring any length. So I think it is clear that how to measure length correctly also, and how to get the standard image. We have already seen that. Okay. Done. Okay. Now we are concerned about measuring a curved line. That first of all we have done the measurement of a straight line. Now we are concerned with the measurement of a curved line. Now the meter scale will not work in case of a curved line. Yes or no? The meter scale will not work in a case of curved line. Yes or no? So what to do then? A method known as thread method is used. A method known as thread method will be used here. Okay. So what do you mean by thread method? Thread method is the method to measure the length of a curved line. So if you can see in the diagram, there is some curved line right here. This red one is the curved line. This was the curved line. Okay, and you want to measure the length of that curved line. So you, we cannot directly use a meter scale because it is straight. So what we do else? We take a thread, we tie a knot to the thread. Suppose we tie a knot here of the thread and align this knot. With the starting point of the curve line, so this is a point. So at a point, you have tie a knot at the thread and just keep it here. Now just stretch it along the curve line. First, put your thumb on the point A, and then your forefinger on the point B. Suppose this is point B. So up to point B, you have made an uh, attached it with the curve line. So now after that, move your thumb towards point B, and again start stretching the thread along the curve line. And again, make the four finger in the forward direction like this. Suppose if you are making thumb here B, now your four finger will be along C. Repeat the process until you reach this end point. So that what is the benefit of doing this process? That you have aligned the thread exactly same way as the curved line is. So basically, you are putting the thread straight above the curved line so that it will match the shape of the curved line. Now tie the Not at the another point C or D, which is the final point. So tie a knot here also. So now you have got two knots on the thread, one at the starting point, other at the ending point. Now stretch this thread along the meter scale here. This is what this was the first knot at A. This was the second knot at D. So now from this you will be easily able to measure the length of thread which was required to align itself along a curve line. So this is the way of measuring the length along a curve line, which is known as thread method. So I hope this is clear. So let's uh, get a much better view of this method with a video. Yeah, I'm going to show you a video. So basically, we are measuring the length of a curved line here. Okay, so let's see what. The length of a curved line can be measured by using a thread. Put a knot on the thread. Put a knot on the thread. Okay. So I told you, you have to put a knot on the thread at the one end of the curved line in which you wish to measure. Here we wish to measure this yellow curved line or curved path. Put a knot at the beginning of the line. Put a knot at the end. Put a knot at the end. Place a small portion of the thread along the curved line. Press the other end of this portion. With your forefinger. Now see, you have pressed the one portion at point A with your thumb, and you are going to press the other portion of the thread along the curve line with your forefinger. Now place the thumb at point B, and a small portion of the thread along the next portion now, of the line. So now what you have done, where you were placing your forefinger, now you have moved your thumb to that point. And now you are going into forward direction and putting your forefinger in the next part of the thread. Yes or no? Or next or the next portion of the line. Repeat to trace the entire length of the curved line using the thread. So now see, you have to repeat this process to trace the entire length of the curved line using a thread until you reach the end point of the curved line. Mark the thread where it touches the end of the line. Now stretch out the done. So you have marked the end point where you have touched the or you have where you have finished the curve line and tie a knot. Tie a knot also there. Okay. Now stretch out the thread on a meter scale and mark the or measure the distance between the two knots. Now stretch out the thread on a meter scale and mark the or measure the distance between the two knots. Now stretch out the thread on a meter scale and mark the or measure the distance between the two knots. 
one knot was at the starting point and the other knot was at the finishing point of the curve on the meter scale and measure its length the length of the thread is the length of the curved line so whatever length you are getting of a thread on the meter scale will give you the length of that curved line so now i hope this is clear how to measure the length correctly yes or no i think this is clear now how to measure the length correctly repeat to trace so i hope this is clear what we have done we have seen how to measure length correctly yeah we have seen the first of all we started with modes of transport we have seen the development of modes of transport starting from boats going to animals then wheels then engines aeroplanes rockets balloons and we have seen different different modes of transport namely land transport water transport air transport okay then we see what is the need of measurement so the need of measurement is to decide how far you have traveled and measurement consists of two parts one part is number which will give you magnitude and other part is a fixed quantity which is known as unit so for getting a standard unit of measurement or for getting a equal value from wherever you are doing the measurement that's why the standard units of measurement were required and we have seen standard units meter centimeter millimeter and kilometer so 1 meter equals to 100 cm that was the inter conversion 1 cm equals to 10 mm that was the inter conversion and 1 km equals to 1000 m so the larger distances are measured in km then in meter then in cm and if the distances are small they can be measured in mm so that's the benefit of using standard units of measurement that the measurement is applicable universally yeah then we have seen how to measure the length correctly there are three precautions you have to take first just align the meter scale or any scale which you are measuring with with the object straight touching the object straight then if your scale is broken you can take the measurement from any centimeter not uh, not compulsory from 0 cm from where the scale has been broken and make the difference of the initial and final reading you will get the correct length of the object okay third thing which is the most important always read the measurement from straight line this if this is the point you have to measure this in front of your eyes only not like this tilting rightward or leftward getting my point then we have seen how to measure the length of a curved line and then length of a curved line can be measured by a method known as thread method you have to simply tie a knot at the starting point step by step trace the thread along the curved line and mark the knot on the final point and then place this thread along the meter scale and mark measure the distance between the two knots one knot was as the initial point another knot was at the final point so whatever measurement you are getting is ultimately the length of the curved line and you have measured it correctly so i hope these all things are clear we have done till now so thank you guys stay safe and enjoy and if you have any doubt just go to the forum at the ask iitians website there is a doubt forum present here you can put your doubts and get your answers okay so we are done to uh, to this lecture of today so thank you so much guys Thank uh you. -huh.